Good morning. I am Penny Nelson, Providence Opry 62959. And today is Thursday and I am making some hot process lye soap. This is going to be a collaboration. So if you would follow the hashtag tag link to see, I don't know, 60, 70, a lot of other soap makers who are going to be doing this collaboration. The name of my soap is going to be called Equipping Haiti 2020 Soap. I want to extend my thanks to Renee at the YouTube channel Soaps for Love for coordinating this event. And I want to give a shout out to all of my other soapy friends. If you would like to get a hold of me, or if you would like this soap, the only way that um, the soap is going to be available is if you give a donation to Equipping Haiti, and then I will send you a thank you um, size bar. I will send it to you with your thank you. And you can mail any tax deductible donations to Equipping Haiti, 706 South Buchanan, Marion, Illinois, 62959. And please put my name on, you'd make the check out to Equipping Haiti. You'd put my name on a yellow post-it, not on the check, so I can send you your thank you gift. So we're going to get started. This collaboration needs to have three items with it. And um, the color green, some form of natural item, and an embed. My, um, there's a lot of, a few things that I am. I am Jesus in a penny vessel, and there's a lot of things I'm not. So this is your official disclaimer. Um, all of this is in my opinion, and you need to do your own research, okay? You are responsible for yourself, so I'm not teaching you everything you need to know, but there are some tips and tricks and my opinion about hot process soap making. So you are responsible for yourself, and all of this is in my opinion. So for the first elements, we have melt and pour embeds. I used the... This is the melt and pour soap, and this has already been saponified. The soap is already saponified. It has lye in it, and it's already been saponified. The reason why I'm using these red embeds is because I need to learn how to make red circle embeds. So I made them with this silicone mold from Brambleberry, with this red mica from Brambleberry, and with sun ripened raspberry from Brambleberry because I'm using the use what you have principle. They could be different, they could be better, but these actually are embeds and they, oh, it's number three, not number one. Okay, the next thing that I'm using is for the green, I'm using, I can't even say the word, Haitian, from Haiti, Marengo powder. And the reason why I learned how to make soap was so that I could create some finances that my son Josiah and I could go on a mission to Haiti in 2015. That's how I learned how to make soap, watching YouTube videos. So that's how Haiti fits into this whole deal. So that's the green, the color green. And the next thing, the, the, Natural item, I am using calendula flowers, which is like a kind of marigold, and they are African. And I got this quite a while ago from East Cope Soap Supplies. I don't even know if she's still around. And how I am doing that is, when you do hot process soap, you super fat at the end. So I have put the extra virgin olive oil, first press, cold press, and I have put, I think it was 10 ounces, uh, not ounces, excuse me, 10 grams. That's a math thing, pardon me. So I put my calendula flowers in here, and I'm just bursting it with heat, and I'm going to put that in my super fats, and then over there I have my press pot, and I put in some hot water, 
and I put in, I think I put in 20 grams of calendula flowers, and I am going to put that tea water, calendula tea water, in my lye water, which I will show you. Now, just to show you some other things, I am probably going to use this blue from Steps, Micahs, and more. And previously, when I made a soap from Haiti, I used the green smoothie from Brambleberry, but in 2017, that's when it came out, they have discontinued it. So I am going to have to make my own special blend. So this is going to be a limited supply. So if you want some of this soap, you need to order it. it you know, it comes and goes. Things are changing. So in 2020, things are changing. So my Haitian blend will be Haitian, excuse me, Equipping Haiti blend will be I haven't made it yet, but I'm going to make it. It's going to be Steph's Micah's English Pear. It's going to be Burst of Energy. Excuse the not focusing. And when I called Brambleberry, they recommended the Green Fig and a few other things to kind of create my own. They were very kind. And then I also have this Crafter's Choice Mediterranean fig. So I am going to try, I'm going to do my own custom blend to look like that, to be this. To make hot process soap, you need a recipe. You can use any cold process recipe and just cook it in a crock pot. So I have my recipe. I have some other items to go into the super fats at the end, and then I have my notes. The ingredients in the bar of soap that I make includes oils and lye water. These are the oils that I use, and I also use steric acid. In a separate safe location, Without grandchildren or cats and with proper safety equipment, I make my lye water. Since I am using the calendula tea, I have discounted my water and I will add the additional water back with tea and add it all together and then blend it. So this is kind of an advanced technique, okay? But this is, this is the lye water. And also, when you make your lye water, you have got to stir your lye water properly. It gets very hot, and then it cools down. I usually wait till it is clear again, and I usually procrastinate till the very last second. So, notice on my washing machine, it says normal. Normal is just a setting on a washing machine, and life is too dirty to even use it. Now, to make hot process soap, you will need tools and equipment. For any job, you need tools and equipment. Um, this is the soapery, my house. So the equipment that you have to have, in my opinion, to make hot process soap, or any soap, you have to have a digital scale. That's how you measure everything. You have to have safety gloves to mix the soap because lye, L-Y-E, lye water, sodium hydroxide, is chemical hot. Now the crock pot will be temperature hot until the soap is saponified. So I don't use any of these items except for making soap. You will need an immersion stick blender and you need a thermometer, a thermometer. And the reason why is you would want your soap temperature to be at 160 before you put in your expensive fragrance oil so you do not cook them out because that would not be wise. You also need a mold and a mostly clean kitchen really helps or a soap studio. Okay, so this is a mold that my husband made and the reason why I use that size it's because this much soap fits in the mold that he made me. So I, so I use my time effectively. It takes me about four hours to make a batch of soap. So I think that we've gotten everything in here, except I do want to thank you. I did want to thank you 
for joining me. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I am so privileged to be a part of this collaboration and I'm so excited to see everyone else's videos. So I'm going to do the very best I can do. I also was supposed to add some inspiration, if I have any, and to be honest, I wanted to make a whole joke because some of the other soap artists are so creative and they're, they're different than me. And it takes a lot of skills to do anything, to make soap, to make videos, to complete a project. So I am not going to get stuck on perfectionism and the inspiration for my soap is complete. <laughs> it's just complete in a, in a, uh, that would be a rectangle. A soap that looks like a rectangle that you can actually use and clean you, that is my inspiration. So, but if I was more clever, I would, I would make a joke for my friends who make the most amazing art that you have ever seen. So check out some of those other soapers at this hashtag, okay? And I hope that this works out so that I get to edit it. So if not, you'll have to check out another video to see the finished product. So let's hope my pray, hope and pray, God help me, that the technology works. And thanks for stopping by. Welcome to my home. Love you. Welcome back. I did want to tell you the difference between hot process and cold process soap. I have taken my immersion stick blender and combined my oils and lye water and shh, that's Mara I'll introduce you and I had lye water and I, woo, and you just fell and I had calendula tea. So this is a trace and this is chemical hot. Here's a disclaimer. And I am going to cook this for two hours. That's food, but not. It's not food. It's okay. chemical hot. It is 337 right. and it's, shh, hush please. I'm going to show you just a minute because I want to go fast. Miss Mara, that's my granddaughter. Let me, let me show you to her, show, show her to you. She'll say hello. So this is going to cook for two hours. We're going to stir it at 60 minutes, 90 minutes, and 120 minutes. And all of this soap is going to be saponified. When you do cold process soap, you don't saponify all the soap. You use a different recipe. So, and hot process soap, the heat forces the saponification. With cold process soap, it's over a period of time. I don't actually know all the chemical no, things, but you can't use the soap right away. You have to wait six weeks no, approximately. With hot process soap, you can use it pretty much right away. It is going to dry more, but um, I'm taking off my gloves. Let me, let me have you say hello to Mara and the kitty. So those are some of the differences between hot process and cold process soap. Is in what are you eating? Um, yeah, Mumsy said, don't go near my table. And this is Morris. Can you say hello, Morris? Yeah, he's having a great time. He's a stray. He picked me. Anyway, so I have the rest of my setup here. And maybe I'll be able to when edit. He was, um, when he was not um, the he did. He was astray and he picked Mumsy. Do you know how did he pick me? Yeah. He rubbed his nose on my nose and he said, You are mine. With his cat voice. Okay. So we're starting the cook. Hot process cook. Yeah. It's on low. Yeah. All right, we are 60 minutes into the hot process lye soap cooking process. And isn't it a lovely yellowish color? So we're gonna stir it, and this is one of my favorite things is to stir it. My granddaughter Mar is over there talking. She's been helping me today. And guess what Lucky is doing? What is Lucky doing? Protecting the... 
he is. He's protecting the yard. And my old dog, Lucky, who's Josiah's dog, he's a Heinz 57. He's a mixed breed. He has become blind. And it's much harder to monitor the yard when you're blind, but he carries on bravely. So we're going to let it cook another 30 minutes. Stir it. We love Lucky. He is. You're sad that he's blind, but he gets along pretty well. He gets along really well. We call him old man now. Yes. Cataracts. His eyes are like white. And guess what? He okay, is let me... nice to Lucky. Yes, he is. Okay, let me tell you about the soap, okay? After it cooks for two hours, that is when we add some super fats. And we are going to be adding coconut oil. We are adding olive oil with calendula leaves, like steeping in it, a little bit of glycerin, and some vitamin E. And because all of this is saponified, that's what I was trying to tell you. Cold processed, you have a percentage of it that is not per saponified. So we can control what we what oils that we use for our moisturizing ingredients. So if you wanted to use a more luxurious or, or expensive oil, you could use any number of items that cost a whole lot more than olive oil and coconut oil and glycerin. So, so we'll bring you back and maybe I'll be able to get this together. Now we are 90 minutes into the cook, an hour and a half, and it's time to stir again. Okay, see how it's cooking more under here? See how that's cooked? And after another half an hour, I'm going to take two pounds of the cooked soap out and put it in a smaller crock pot and add part of the super fats to it. I've done math to do it. Part of the super fats with the blue mica from Steph's Mica to make it the one part blue. And then I'm gonna add the Marengo powder, which turns the soap green to the remaining part. Ow! You know, if you touch a hot crock pot with your skin, it hurts. It burns you. And I should be wearing gloves, but I forgot. That's why you're doing your own research. Here's gloves. Oh, thank you. You can say hello to Mara. Hi. I just told her to wear gloves. Mm -hmm. That's what my eyes are burning because of those that soda. Because of the soda? Yeah. Okay, so another 30 minutes. Okay, so I have my olive oil that has, I've been bursting in the microwave with the calendula in it. And so now it's time for me to drain the oil out. So I can put the oil for my super fats. This has a wonderful smell. Then, so I'm going to add 15 grams to my blue mica and my other super fats, and then I'll put that in two pounds of soap. And then this is my moringa powder, and I've used it before, and it makes a be- Shh, Mars. She's not shy on YouTube. Um, it makes a beautiful green. And I'm going to put 46 grams in the green. Stop. All right. I'm kind of- I'm kind of concerned that my blue is going to turn a different color. So first you have to zero it, you have to lift. So this is the calendula 
olive oil. A little heavy. All right, and then 46. You help me get me get, help me get to 46. Okay, I've got some light. Oh, too heavy. Ooh, and I got blue in there. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> okay. All right. I've got blue in my, in my vat. Okay, so we'll leave this over here. All right. Okay. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, now I'm confused. We'll leave it a little heavy. Okay. All right. So that's my super fats. And over here, I'm all, that's my embeds. Well, soap is fully cooked. It's cooked for two hours. And the soap is very thick. It's not fluidy like... Um, cold process. So I'm going to put two pounds in this crock, which I'm heating up, and then I'm going to put the blue in it. I'm going to stir the marango and the super fats in, and then it's going to cook for another 30 minutes, and then we're going to cool it. This one is the one that's pretty. Now, I've never used micas, but what I was saying is hot process soap is more of a country um, style, shabby chic. It's more rustic. I call it country. So it's not going to be a drop swirl, it's going to be a plop swirl. So that's how this is going to happen. So this is on low. And it seems to be turning a pretty good blue. The color's not the... It's a pretty good blue. I think there'll be a, a contrast enough. So after it cooks for half an hour, then we're going to let it cool to 160 and put the fragrance oil in. And the fragrance oil is smelling delicious. I can smell it here around here. Come say hello, Mara. Let's see what we got here. So that's the Bodacious Blue Neon and Hot Process Soap from Steph's yes. Micahs and More. Be careful, I won't be by the blue stick. Stop. What color do you like better, Mara? You like Black green? and blue and pink and white. Black and blue and pink and, and white. And also, I hate green. You hate green? Don't be hating. I didn't mean to say that, but I don't like green. Mara doesn't like green. Well, green was what our challenge was for flower power for spring, so... Green was what we had to use, and then we could pick something else. We'll bring you back. It is the exciting part. The fragrance oil has been stirred in, and it is time to load this soap into the mold. So this is my green color, 
and that is my blue color and I'm pretty pleased with it so now we're gonna get it in the mold and this is what I call a plop swirl like so and I'm also going to put now not every bar is going to get one it's going to be like a mystery here and there alright so you get the idea there it is the next day Hi. and we are cutting the soap. We have unmolded it and I am cutting bars. I, it's a very light smell. It is, I'm sorry. So I do have the green with moringa powder. I do have an embed. Blue. And I do have blue. Blue and pink. It looks like pink instead of red. Pink and red. And I've done the plop and swirl. So I am very pleased with this. So this is my sister. I do have a few holes, but these are going to be gifts to people who never seen never seen this no who are going to help out the people in Haiti and you can help the people in Haiti by praying for them buying soap or just sending a donation to equipping Haiti 706 South Buchanan Marion Illinois 62959 Josiah my son and I need to raise $3,000 we are going in July to do a vacation Bible school and to do feeding. So we're doing physical help and spiritual help. And there has been demonstrations in Haiti. So if we are not able to go, we will still send money and the Haitian friends of ours will carry on the work. We will be feeding about 400 Haitian students. See, I like that. That's actually a mistake, but I think it's character. In Port-au-Prince, and we have worked our church, our group, Equipping Haiti from Third Baptist Church in Marion, Illinois, has worked with these communities since 2012. We wanted to have continuing relationships. So that's just about it. All right, so I'm gonna take some pictures and see how my video turns out. So I wanna thank you for hanging on if you've gone this far. And uh, I just really have enjoyed this collaboration. This is the most complex soap that I have ever attempted. And I am very happy with it. So it is really wonderful to be challenged Mara thinks those. Some of them look like hearts. All right. Thanks for watching.